Hello everyone and welcome back to another FTC 18715 programming tutorial. Today we're going to be showing you how to use encoders, so let's get right into it. Let's go! Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just configure the thing. So most of the time what's going to happen is that your control hub has, it only has four motor slots. And most of the time those are taken up by your, um, what's it called, uh, drivetrain. So what we actually want to do is we want to be able to put in our expansion hub so what i did there is i just clicked the scan button and expansion hub so we're going to go to motors and then we're going to select our motor and let's just call this one done 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 save okay so motors have these things called ticks so what a tick basically is like let's say a motor has 100 ticks if we told that motor to run 100 ticks it will run one full rotation so how do we get these useful numbers ticks well, on GoBuilda, if we go to their website, it says on here, so I'm using a 60 RPM for this example. We go all the way to here for the encoder resolution. So this number right here is going to be our ticks. So let's put this into a double. Let's call this ticks, it goes to length, and then we're going to commas, yeah, commas. And then let's also create something called the Explain why that's useful later. So another thing we want to do in, our, in it is we want to do motor dot get set mode DC motor and using encoders. So what this is basically telling is the motor will now use his encoder. So without this command, the motor won't really understand like to use encoders and all that. So what we want to do in this loop is create a very simple if statement. So let's do um, if gamepad to actually we can use one a. Uh, let's do encoder and let's give it a value of two. So we're gonna create a new method called encoder. So we're just gonna do public public void encoder int and let's just call this turn so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to do new target equals turn our ticks slash turnage and i spelled the code wrong there we go okay so like i said earlier if you spin like let's say let's use our example so if I use the ticks and I spin it 2,786.2 ticks, it will do one full rotation. So when we click the gamepad A, that full rotation will be divided by two. So it's only gonna do a half turn. So this is very useful to create a method like this because if we wanna be able to change it, maybe a quarter turn or a half turn, all we have to do is call this method and give it a value instead of creating this whole thing complicated system so that's why we want to create a separate thing right so another thing we have to do is in order for the encoder to understand where it's actually going we have to tell it to go so let's do motor dot set target position and tell it to do um this only takes integers so we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do new target so what this is saying is that we are setting the target position at a half turn because this is being divisible by two. So now the thing is, if we tell it to do, we have to actually you know, tell it to do the action. It only knows where it's to go. So how do you do this? First, we need to give it power. And by doing this, we're just gonna do motor.setPower and you can change whatever the power is, but be wary that it's either gonna be, like let's say you're making a turret and you're spinning the turret, if you put too much speed into that, then the momentum's gonna carry it through and it might um, make your motor encoder slip a bit. So be careful on the speed you choose and be very selective. So then we're gonna do, we're gonna tell it to actually go there. So what we're gonna do is motor.setMode, DC motor dot run mode dot run to position. So what this is basically saying is, the game, when we click gamepad A, new turnage is gonna be half the amount of ticks. And remember, 2,786 ticks is one whole turn. 
So we're halving that turn. So we're doing a half turn and then we're telling them we want to make a half turn at this amount of power. And then we're saying, okay, everything's good. Let's go. Okay. So another useful thing is let's say you want to reset your encoders. So the thing about motors are they will know where you are unless you reset it and call this command. So motor.setMode DC motor dot stop and reset encoders so what this is gonna do is it's basically gonna um you're gonna stop and reset your ticks so that you're back at zero so if i do this it will basically say the motor is set to the current encoder position to zero so basically what that is doing is it's just resetting the whole encoders so it really depends on what you want to do so if you fully want to track your motor no matter where it is then you probably don't want to use this command another thing i want to show you guys is how you actually work this so basically you want to plug your motor in like normal and there's going to be a little slot next to the motor and that's where you want to plug in your encoder okay, so, 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 so there we go and it's connected and that's basically all you want to do okay so i put a piece of duct tape so that you guys could see it easier so i'm gonna click a and hopefully the tape ends right here so let's go oh, wrong one. oh i forgot to click start <laughs> oh okay here we go ready uh, and it did it worked and it moved kind of slowly because we set it only to 0 0.3 power and remember 0. Point, or sorry one is like the max and also this is a 60 rpm motor so it is pretty slow high torque but as you can see it definitely worked and when you try to budge it it won't really budge and it will keep this position another really cool thing that i want to show you guys and it's very useful for um, keeping track of something so what you can do is let's just create a telemetry dot add data and we're gonna say um motor ticks and then here we're gonna add motor dot set or yeah set let's think actually what we're gonna do is motor dot get current position yeah this is what it is so basically what this function is gonna do it's gonna get its current position and since it's in this loop it's gonna constantly update our position so let me show you this right now initialize and start so right now it is telling us 139.5 which pretty much matches up because we had roughly 2.7k so when you divide that by half it makes sense so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this and i'm going to rotate it and then you'll be able to see the motor ticks change As you can see, the motor ticks are able to keep track of the current position. So let's create a new method. I'm just gonna call this tracker and we're gonna call this motor.set target position. And what we're gonna set it as is we're just gonna set it zero. So like, let's say we wanna reset it to one. And we can just do um, motor.set. Let's make this a bit faster. Let's go 0 0.8, something fast. And we're just gonna do uh, motor dot set mode DC motor dot run mode dot run to position. Okay, so to test this, I'm going to go into our coder and start. So right now it is at zero. So I'm going to move this to something that's not zero. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to plug in the controllers switch to this and right now it is at 1117 right so now i'm going to click this button and it will reset back to zero <laughs> i can't believe i totally forgot about uh, okay anyways i forgot to um actually utilize this so let's just do if game had one dot b Right now, the motor ticks are at 1391. So let's click B and it will reset back to 
fortune let's go and wow it did it really fast and right here is the exact origin so like let's say we go to uh let's move it uh what is it 180 degrees so let's go move it very slowly and as you see can't really budge it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset it back to origin with just one button and notice that if i reset this right i'm going to just spin this like let's say right here and if i click the b button it'll reset like somewhere somewhere down here right so let's just click the b button see what happens and just like that the motor is reset down here and make sure that you use an optimal speed because right now the motor tick is shuffling between one and three and then not exactly zero and it's probably because i'm moving the motor too fast and the momentum is carrying it to move a little extra so in today's video you learn a lot about how to use encoders and all the other functions with it in the next video we're going to be showing you how to use servos and how to code servos and until next time peace